cause is close to you, probably the question you get every year, just how much does this mean to you to, to, to be here every year? Well, I, I think what what's important uh, to note is is what we do on an, on an annual basis. It's not just this event. You know, this is important. Why? Because all four Division One institutions participate together, all on the same team. And that is one of the great things about the Coaches versus Cancer program. That was sort of the intent when we first started this. Obviously, news of the week would be losing Kirk. I mean, talk about a right-hand man for you uh, last several years. I mean, how do you even begin to think about replacing him? You know, he's... Kirk's really one, one of the best I've, I've ever been around at breaking a team down, putting a scouting report together. Mm -hmm. But he was so much more than that. I mean, he was, I think, an underrated recruiter. Uh, you know, you think of him as, you know, the older guy, sort of a tactician expert. He was a really good recruiter. I mean, he did that for a long time. He's a tremendous talent evaluator. He was really good with skill development. He's noted for his ability to help young guys improve their shooting, yeah. which he's done. But it's not just that either. He does a lot with film, breakdown, and, and has developed, I think, really good relationships with the guys. Uh, so it was it was something that, uh, you know, for him, you know, when, when somebody kind of walks away on their terms, I think you're happy for that person and his family, and he was ready. Uh, he really, dedicated himself to our program uh, and really put the, put the hours in, you know, and, and weekends and late nights. You know, he didn't slow down at all. You know, you think, well, the, you know, the guy's getting a few few years older. He was grinding, and, and, and you appreciate that about him. I think more importantly, forget about me, the players appreciated that about him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just talked to him yesterday, actually, and he yeah. was uh... – or maybe it's two nights. It was the night he retired. Where, um, he said he told you a while back, so at least you, you feel like you've had time to. You, you kind of knew you were going to have. But, but maybe like yeah, after was, Billy left. Yeah. He, he was thinking about it. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, you know, I, I really felt like Billy was going to get a job this year. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just I felt like he was going to get one last year, to be honest with you, and he didn't. And I said, well, this year I think he's definitely going to get one, and he did. Mm -hmm. And he deserves that. You know, Kirk, I thought, might go a few more years. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it was a traumatic year for, for his family with losing his mom and Tracy losing her mom. I think that, that was something that I think made him look at this a little bit differently. His children are getting older. He's got a bunch of grandchildren that he wants to spend time with. He loves the golf. You know, he still has his health. And I think when we don't always choose when we leave this business, but if, if you can leave with your health and, and family, that's the time to enjoy it. Do you feel like the your next hire will have to be like an associate head coach type of thing, or how, how would you, you know, Iowa ties? What are you kind of looking for for that spot? I think you look at a lot of different things when you're thinking about replacing somebody the caliber of Kirk Spiroff. Mm -hmm. You know, familiarity might be great. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be something that has to be there, but I think that's a distinct possibility. You know, uh, typically with with the hires that I've made is people that there's somewhat of a relationship with. Yeah. Uh, that I know the person, the person's character, thing, things like that. Uh, but it's got to be somebody that has experience and knows what they're doing. Yeah. You know, it's not an entry-level job by any means. And I think the person that's hired there will fulfill that role really well. It'll be somebody that's ready to jump right in. Yeah. You know, I, th I feel really good with the team we have right now, uh, but you're always looking. You know, we're kind of locking into the to the next class. You know, we're really working hard with with that group. You know, we have one commitment. You know, we will have a bunch of scholarships in that class, and we've really worked that class hard. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. It's gonna, what is it like right now out there? In, college basketball world like just to... well, I mean it's, it's completely different yeah uh, you know there's gonna be a lot of players that enter the portal some of whom left for money uh, and they're looking for money uh, so that's something you have to deal with it's just reality uh, you know I think when you saw the portal and NIL so they didn't come in exactly at the same time but it was close uh, 
you know, I think the concern was it would become pay for play. It's not what it was supposed to be, but it is. So again, it goes back to, you think about all the years I've been doing this, rules change, landscapes change, teams change conference. You know, we're constantly dealing with uh, a fluctuating situation and we have to adapt. It's just like the course of a game. You have to make adjustments during the course of a game. During the course of a season, you change your lineup. Uh, you change your philosophy a little bit, whatever. You know, you have to approach this whole thing differently now because it's a different world. And it, it's not a function of whether you like it or don't like it, agree with it, don't agree with it. That's what it is. So what you do is you work the problem. You know, and, and, and people are going to want to come to Iowa. You know, some won't for a variety of reasons, but that's okay. We'll get those who do, mm -hmm. and, and we'll do it the right way. We won't break the NCAA rules. You know, we'll work the portal. We'll work the high school ranks. We'll work the junior college ranks, and we'll get those who are the right fit for our program. I'm sure, we all obviously knew what was coming down the pipe for Keegan, but a lot of interesting turns with Chris lately. Where are you at with, with him, and how are you feeling? <laughs> any any strong feelings about which way he, he might go? or interest? You know, I, 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 I'm just 100% behind Chris and support him in every way. Uh, he's really worked hard since the season ended, and, uh, you know, whatever the future holds for him is something else important.